you know, I didn't choose my side of this cancer. Not the exact. Hey, hon. Take me to the king. 
take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is in pieces. And this is my offering. Sometimes all we have is ourselves. So that's all we have to give to the Lord is ourselves. And so whatever it is, we just take it to the king. And he will work it out. No matter what it is, no matter how tough it is, take it to the king and he will work it out. Well, I want to say good evening to each and every one of you who is on this broadcast tonight. I don't know, I keep saying broadcast, but you know, live feed. Live stream, excuse me. And I'm glad that you joined in on tonight. God bless each and every one of you. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be talking about Moses reflects God's glory. Moses reflects God's glory. And I asked, I said, do you reflect God's, God's glory? Because when you have an experience, like I said before, when you have an experience with God, there is a difference. There is a change. There is a uh, up front. You can see that people have had an experience with God if they really had an experience. And when you spend time with God, when you spend intimate time with God, people can see, people can tell by the way you talk, by the way you act, by the way you do. They can tell that you had an experience with God and there's something about you that changes you, you, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you do, the way you interact, the way that you go about handling business. It says, it reflects, it should reflect God's glory if you say you are his child and you are doing his work. It should reflect God's glory. And this lesson is coming from Exodus the 34th chapter, 27 through 35. Exodus 34, 27 through 35. <clears throat> Let us pray and then we'll go to the lesson. Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for being with us one more time. We thank you for this moment. Lord, we thank you for the people who are who I can't see, who I can see, the ones who are going to be listening later, and the ones who are going to be on YouTube. Lord, bless them for just supporting this ministry. Lord, I thank you for these that people. Lord, as we uh, go into your lesson on tonight, open up their hearts and minds and understanding that they may receive your word and apply your word in their life so that they will be more willing to be a reflection of you. Lord, also, as I go through this lesson on tonight, Lord, be with me, Lord. Touch my mind, my heart, and my soul. Lord, uh, let, let it be all of you and none of me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in my sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Moses reflect God's glory. Exodus 34, 27 through 35. All right. Let's start the lesson. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Now, he had already wrote the Ten Commandments. He had the laws. But then, Moses, the Lord heard the noise. Josh, um, Joshua, that's his name. Joshua heard the noise. Moses heard the noise. What's going on? They done messed up. So, Moses got mad and broke the tables. So, Moses had to spend some time, some more time with God. I'm sure he wouldn't. He, he wasn't mad about it. I mean, he wasn't, no, he wasn't like, no, I don't, I'm just got to come to you again. No, because last week, what did we find out? He said, he asked uh, God to show him his glory. Show him, show me your glory. Lord, if I have found favor in thy sight, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me your glory. So the Lord said, okay, now look, I can show you my, I can't show you my full glory. Because you can't see, if you look at my face, you're going to die. So I don't want you to die yet. So I'm going to let you see my hinder parts. I'm going to put you in the cliff of the rock. And I'm going to pass by you. And then when I pass by you, I will remove my hands so you can see my back, back parts. So when he went by Moses, he said he covered Moses with his hand. Now I made the example that when God covered Moses with his hand, I'm like, God's hand was big enough to block his face from Moses. Block Moses from his face. So there had to be some 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 sizable hands and shows you how big God actually is or how he was big he was portrayed because we know he's a big God. We know he can do all things. We know he's all 
He's omnipresent everywhere at the same time, omnipotent, all powerful, omnipresent everywhere at the same time. So we just so think uh omniscient knows all things. So we thank God for knowing God is an all powerful God. He is the God. He is it. There is no other. Can't nobody do nothing like him. Nobody can top him. Nobody can duplicate him. It can't be done. Nope. Stop trying. Ain't a story. Leave it alone. Okay. So when he passed by him, he passed by then. When he got by him, he moved his hand. And Moses saw his hand of course. So now we're going to find out, okay, after Moses was up there 40 days and 40 nights, and he said he did. Okay, we're going to the next verse. I'm about to. About to talk about the next verse. We ain't got that yet. Okay, here we go. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant and Ten Commandments. That's what he did. He wrote the, the words of the covenant and the Ten Commandments. He did all this, spending 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you actually spent quality time? Oh, my goodness. 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord. Sometimes, you know, an hour or two, that just mess you up. But you, I mean, ain't nobody bothering you. No phone, no people, no cheering, no husband, no wife. Just you and the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. Who would be thinking about food for 40 days and 40 nights and you hanging out with the Lord? Huh? I mean, the Lord talking to you, you listening. And it's like, oh my goodness, I don't know where else I'd rather be than right there with the Lord. Saying it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Hey, Tracy. He, he said he didn't know. He just up there with the Lord chilling, hanging out, having a good old time. And then all of a sudden he come down and his face just lit up. He got this glow. I mean, this wee glow. 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord. You going to be regular people? Okay, so his face head was so anointedly bright. How many of y'all can say that you're anointedly bright? I mean, you, you know, you're anointed. But how many of you can say that you're brightly anointed? I mean, there's, people can see you're anointed. They can see the glow. They can see the presence of God. They can see the reflection of God because his God, God's glory has touched you. God's glory has overwhelmed you. God's glory has endowed you. And so people can see that you have been with God, that you walked and talked with God. He didn't know his face was shining. Somebody had to tell him because he was just, he's like, hey, hey, I've been with the Lord. I got the covenant. I got the tables. I'm ready. I don't know about y'all. Y'all better come on and catch up here. So somebody had to tell him, oh, Moses, we, you kind of bright, dude. We, you going to hurt us or blind or something. We scared. Okay. And saying when when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. See, they thought they uh, uh he was like, uh, wait a minute, um, so wait, Moses went up there to talk with the Lord. Okay, we know the Lord power. What happened? What you do? What what you? What's going on, Moses? Did we scared? We good? That's what you need to be. You need to be scared because y'all done messed up. God could have done blasted y'all. He done hurt you and hurt your feelings a couple times. And y'all still don't get it. So Moses going to bring the law. And he was like, okay, he done touched Moses. And now Moses got that glow. So it's like, oh, Lord. What? Did he, did he go? No, I, people are. Did he go there and give him some special power? No. It's just that he spent so much time with the Lord. His whole situation has been transformed. I said that. His whole situation, his face. It's just something about that face. You see God's face. Uh-huh. And then you get what's in his hands. You see his face, you get what's in his hands. So when Moses had sat in the presence of God, and he sat with all that power and all that glory, it just, you know, just got on him and it just engulfed him. And he was like, ooh, we man. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. And you know, when you sit in the light that long, it's something going to be transformed, a powerful light. Like that something going to happen. So his face was so bright till the folks got scared. They said, what you scared of the light for? Why are we scared? Mm. Why are we scared of the light? Okay, I'm just, I just threw that at Hope ain't nobody scared of the light. Hope you're trying to come run to the light. You know, some people like darkness. Because ain't nobody see what they're doing. And don't nobody know where they at. But when the light on is up. I 
didn't do nothing. That was me. The song said, if you didn't come up and touch me, show sure wasn't me. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, let me go. It, it was scared. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. Now, I'm sure they was, you know, they were sitting there because Moses didn't do nothing. He didn't bust nothing. You know, he just didn't know, no, no, uh, no, I don't want to say trick, but that ain't what I want to say. No other kind of miracle. Let's go. Okay. He didn't perform no kind of super fly miracle. So it was like, okay, we're going, okay, we're going to meet with Moses. But we going, we don't know. He might just disappear for our eyes because Moses looked different. He, you know, like I told y'all last time, last week, you know, in the Ten Commandments, when he came out the, out of the, when, I mean, uh, out the, off the mountain, he had his head, head, hair was thicker, he got some gray in it, had the beard, had some gray in it. And I said, like, okay, most of them women got deeply, you know, because he looking saintly and powerful, you know, and then they got Charlton Heston, you know, he looked deep anyway, and so they added all that, and I was like, okay, all right, dude, and so that's how it be. When God deals with you or God talks to you, you're not going to look the same. It's going to be a glow about you and people going to be like, hmm, what's different? About, you know what's different. Quit playing. You're just trying to act like you're so deep. Don't, you're not that deep. Stop. Okay. But anyway, so he just had a different appearance. And so his men was there and they was talking to him. And I was like, okay. So he was like, okay, I got the commandments. I, I talked to the Lord. This is what's going to happen. These are the rules that's going to be laid out. So we're going to know what the Lord needs us to do. He said, Afterward, all the children of Israel came now, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. He gave them everything that God gave him. Do we give people all that God tells us to give them? You know, we sometimes... Sometimes we get in a position where we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. So we hold back. If God tell you what to say, how to say it, who to say it to? Do what God tell you. Now make sure it's the Lord. Make sure it's the Lord. Because if you're going on your own, you're going to get your feelings hurt. One way or the other. The person going to hurt your feelings or God going to hurt your feelings. So when God tells you to say what you need to say, go ahead and say it. What I don't feel, ain't nobody asks you about your feelings. It's not about you. It's about your obedience. It's about your obedience. You got to do what God tells you to do. No matter how, be like, oh, Lord, I don't even know. Ew, Jesus. Somebody almost missed their blessing because, you know, they, God told them to tell me something. And they looked at me like, Lord, but she a preacher. God said, hey, I need her to know. And so it's like, well, I've been wrestling with this. God told me. I said, what did he say? I ain't, <laughs> God told you to tell me. And like I said, make sure the Lord told you. Because if he didn't tell you, I would let you know what you're talking about. Yeah, what you, where you get that from? What the Lord told what Lord? But see, when God comes at you like that, it's confirmation. When that person, you know, was relaxed enough to talk to me, I was like, oh, man, I needed to hear that. And they were like, huh? I said, Yeah. I said, preachers need encouragement too. Mm-hmm. We do. We, just, we, not, we you know, every day ain't Sunday. Every day ain't Rose. Every day ain't Peach. I may act like, but sometimes things, I go through some things and I got to deal with some things too. And I say, God, you want to, Lord, you want to, I need you. Now, come on. I got to make it through. I got to push through. So we need God whenever. So preachers need encouragement too. But when we do what we're supposed to do, you know, Lord will strengthen us. A lot of times we don't even have to ask for strength. God be like, okay, I got you. I got you. I see what you're doing. I see you trying to keep on going. I see you trying to push. I see you trying to make a way. I see you trying to make it happen. And so then God keeps on pushing it so you can reflect his glory. He will give you that strength that you need every time because he's saying, okay, she's doing what I need her to do. She's representing me. I got to take care of her. I got to cover her. So I'm walking. In God's glory. We're walking in God's glory. If you beat into God and you do what he tells you to do, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, I keep telling y'all, I said, just say yes to God and, you know, quit running. Quit fighting. Quit arguing. Just tell him yes. And somebody got, you know, they had a little situation. It's about, okay. When you say yes to the Lord, that's where the trouble comes. I say, and your point is what? Jesus said, in this world, we will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. What's your problem? 
if you got the conqueror, the victor on your side, what? Come on, problem. Come on, situation. Come on, folks. Come on, haters. I'm trying to reflect God's glory. You might see me bend. You might see me sway. But I promise you, you'll never see me break. That's the mentality you got to have. I may bend up. I may sway. But you'll never see me break. And that's what's reflecting God's glory is all about being able to stand in the midst of. Being able to stand no matter what. Being able to stand in the middle of chaos and be calm. Be able to stand in the middle of hate and still love. Be able to stand in the middle of confusion and be at peace. Reflecting God's glory. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Moses figured it. He's like, okay, well, let me put the veil since they can't handle my... They probably say, well, yeah. you know, they had no shades back then, so they was like, okay, well, man. Whoo, bro, Moses, wait a minute. So Moses had to put a veil on his face so they could look at him. You know, if you like to look at folks while they're talking, but they couldn't look at him because he was too bright. He was still shining, stronger than a diamond. That was some stuff you can't even, you can't even hardly look at him. He's bright. Oh Lord, I would. Uh, I don't know. Might scare some. But anyway, but when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spoke to the children of Israel with that which he was commanded. He did what he had to do. So he put the veil on his face because his face was so bright. Because every time he go in to be with the Lord, ooh, his face would get bright. And he was like, uh-uh, can't go out there with the people, so let me put my veil on and keep it on while I talk to them. And when I talk to God, I ain't take it out. Now, that just lets me know. Sometimes, you know, that, that's <clears throat> how people are. We get with the glory and we're just so pristine. We, we take our veil off and we get before the Lord and we bear our souls and we want it. And then we come out, we put a veil on. Not because our face is shining. That veil represents fakeness. But you shouldn't have to have a veil on your face for fakeness. But you can have a veil on your face because God calms down your glow. And people can handle the soft glow. Because that's what, because God does not want us to be unapproachable. He wants people to be eager to talk to us and ask us, how can you stand when all of this is going on? How can you be at peace when all this is going on? How can you still praise God when all this is going on? When so much, you, it's, what? I mean, how? I tell you, I steady talk to God all the time when I'm up, when I'm down, when I'm sideways, when I'm twisted, when I'm up under the floor, when I'm on top of the floor, when I, you know, it don't make no difference. I stay in contact. Sometimes I just vent to God. I don't know if y'all at that stage, but I vent to God. I'm like, God, look, I'm just, you know, because I just come to him, you know, talk to him. So when I get through venting, he be like, okay, you good now? I'm good. So, you know, God is there. I want to reflect him. I don't want people to get caught up because I'm caught up. See, when you caught up and then you trying to deal with people and then they get caught up, all y'all get caught up and get and everybody start crazy, talking crazy. Like, no, we don't need it. We want to continue to reflect his glory. Hey, Lady Dang, continue to reflect his glory because it's so many people out there hungry for love. I ain't got to the word yet. Love. Attention. Kind words. Hugs. Availability. And then I, okay, now, give me God's word. But you're trying to, you know, they just, I just want a hug. Oh, I ain't got to have no hug right now. You know, I, I got to be over here to the meeting. I got to go to the church. I'm on my way to church. I get a hug when I come back. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. We in a hurry to get to the church, but we pass by our ministry. Oh, did you hear me? I said that. We in a hurry to get to the church, but we pass by our ministry. Lord, if there's anybody out there, Lord, you know, give me the opportunity to bless somebody, Lord. Please, Lord, please. And if you find an opportunity to bless somebody, you be like, um, baby, I ain't got time right now. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm late for church already. And I just said, okay, well, uh -huh. well, you late all the time. What's, what's, what's different about this, son? 
Because you actually have a reason to be late this day. Oh, did I say that? Okay, sorry. All right, let me get back to the list. It said, but when Moses went in, I'm going to say this again. I'm reading this again. Went in before the Lord to speak with him. He took the veil out because he was able to just be himself and relax. But because the people couldn't handle. Oh, my God. Lord, you just dropped that in my spirit. Because the people couldn't handle his anointing. He had to have a veil. You know, sometimes people cannot handle your anointing. Not because your anointing is so fabulous and so great. A lot of times it's because it's you. Lord, you get you anointed here. Huh? Lord, now you know I've been long time. I've been in this thing a long time. Why I ain't got no love? I say right there. That attitude right there. That's why you don't have the anointing that you could have. Because of your attitude. Attitude determines altitude. Obedience, good altitude, good attitude determines your altitude. Let me say you something else while we're talking about altitude. If you do what you're supposed to do with God, be obedient, stay in His Word, stay in His grace. Do what God tells you to do without murmuring and complaining. You won't have to ask God to take you to the next level. He will be willing to promote you. Mm -hmm. Let me read this last scripture and we're going to move on to the practical points, okay? And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses and the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Sometimes our anointing is so great until we have to tone down. Now listen to what I'm saying. We got to tone down the way we do what we do. And when I say tone it down, I don't mean change what you're saying. I mean just God will give you how to work your Work what you do. Because see, can't nobody do what you do. That's the anointing. Can't nobody do what you do like you do what you do. It's very few people. Um, it's only one me. Let me put it like that. It's only one me. I don't care how good they are, how sweet they sound, how, how many folks they grab. I don't care. I'm going to do me. I ain't going to copy nobody. I ain't never wanted to copy nobody. You know, unless, you know, back in the day when we was cheering, we was playing church at home. That's the only time I copy somebody. But once I've been in the ministry, baby, no. You might see some of Pastor Jenna and Max, the late Pastor Jenna and Max. You might see that because I hung around her most of my life. You're going to see some of my daddy because, yeah, that's my dad. But other than that, you ain't finna see me. Oh, she had just like, oh, you know, she do this just. No, baby. I am me ain't gonna be no now no now nutter. Yeah, I said okay. Just me. I want to reflect God's glory in the way I talk, in the way I teach, in the way I preach, in the way I act, in the way I respond. I want to reflect God's glory. Can you do that? Do you want to reflect God's glory? Say, Lord, show me your glory. Lord, if I'm not where I need to be, fix me, straighten me out, Lord, and give me your glory so others can see that you are, that you approve of me, that you are, you have anointed me, that you have appointed me, and I am reflecting your glory. Okay, we're going to the practical points. God's word reminds us that he is faithful. And it challenges us to remain faithful to him. God's word and God are faithful. Are you faithful to him? You know, some people get in relationships and I don't care how good the other person is, how willing the other person is, how awesome the other person is, they still going to slide to the left. Don't have no reason, just something they get, just that demon that's in them that makes them want to go slide to the left. Well, okay, so you cheating on God, you're going to be in trouble. You cheating on the other, the, the significant other, the, the spouse, you can't, you, you can't win. It's, it's not happening. So you got to be faithful to God, no matter what. Somebody said, well, they don't want me. Who is they? Well, she told, who is she? Well, he told, who is he? God said, 
Oh, okay, right. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what I said. When God said, that's it. Whether I believe it or not, whether I agree with it or not, that's it. That settles it over and done with. God has spoken. Let's say amen. Uh huh. It said, uh, God has spoken. What is that? Let the church say amen. Okay, thank you. That's all we got to say. We ain't got nothing else to say. Lord, see, I think what, no, man, excuse me. Shh. Take four seats and sit down. Thank you. God demonstrates his provision in supernatural ways for those who draw near to him. God demonstrates his provision in supernatural ways. Now, you know, when we go to the store sometimes, we be like, Lord, oh, this is all I got. This is all I got. And I don't know how it's going to make. And you just happen to walk in on they having this ridiculous sale. And then you able to like, what, 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 two, what happened? How, how would I do? Two, what? I heard a preacher, I, well, I don't know if it was a preacher or a deacon, but I heard a preacher say, two plus, two plus five equals five thousand. I said, like, oh, wait, did he say? I'm going to let y'all figure that out. Two plus five. Equal five thousand, and when it was more than five thousand, but we just you, you were just talking about the people, you know. But I'm gonna let y'all figure that out. What I'm talking about. So anyway, if you draw nigh to God, if you draw near to God, you stay near to God. You are gonna get what He got. I heard. Uh, I love this. Uh, y'all can go look it up. Uh, Pastor, oh Lord, what's the, Jamal Walker, I think it is. He took over New Birth. Um, he was talking about his three daughters, and then. Uh, he gave the first daughter $50 to him, go get whatever you want. The second daughter $50, go ahead and get what you want. But the well, other daughter stayed with him. So he walking through, they walking through the store and say, Daddy, I, this is kind of cute. What you think? Yeah, that's cute. You think it look good to me? Yeah, okay, okay, well, I'm going to get it. And so then she went to say, Daddy, you th I think I like this right here. This kind of used to be, yeah, you, you, what, what I, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead and get that, go ahead and get that. So she went chopping through, picked up a couple more things, and so the other two daughters came back. They tell me, wait a minute, we got fifty dollars worth of stuff. How you get a hundred and fifty dollars worth of stuff? That daughter say, cause I walked with him. And I talked with him. That's just what I'm saying. Sometimes you wanna take a little bit and run. But if you stay with God and talk with him, and walk with him, you end up more with the people that took a little bit because they say, God, I want, and they, God gave to them, they ran. But when you say, Lord, thank you, and stay right there, ain't no telling what you're going to end up with. So just stay right there. Walk, continue to walk with him and talk with him. God's presence in a believer's life displays his character to a watching world. Oh, see, you hear me? God's presence in a believer's life displays his character. God's presence in a believer's life displays his character to a watching world. People are watching you. If you don't want people to watch you, stay home. Hey, Cheryl. Stay in your closet. Hey, Felicia. Stay in your closet. Don't say nothing. Don't come out. If you don't want people to watch you, stay home. If you don't want people to look at you, stay home. Now, if you're supposed to be a servant of God and you don't want people watching you, go sit down. Go turn in your papers to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, don't, I can't do this. Because if you are a servant of God, people are going to be watching you because you said you are a servant of God. So they're going to see, are you really a servant of God? Are you really saved and sanctified? Are you saved and crankified? That's what they used to say back in the day. Because you're so cranky and crazy that you won't act like you say, but you got this whole nother attitude and you got a whole nother life. Living the double life in the church. I need to preach that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Living a double life in the church. And, I, mm, ooh, we godly. Okay, sorry. Uh huh. I'm going to have to preach that. Okay. God's work in a believer's. Uh oh, that's another. Okay. And God's presence in a believer's life displays his character. His character. His character. What are you displaying? Hmm? Uh, what, are you, what are you displaying? What do people see when they look at you? Sometimes I think you need to ask that. And don't, don't ask your friend. Don't ask your church family. Don't even ask your pastor. Ask that person you work with. What do you see when you see me? Yep. Ask them. Ask them. What do they see? Do they see God or do they see them? Did I say that out? <laughs> 
Yes, it. Mm, mm, okay. Okay. Here we go. God's work in a believer's life invites. Uh, okay. Start over. I'm running too fast. God's work in a believer's life invites others to know Him. When somebody see you, do they want the Lord? Tomorrow. Oh, wait a minute. I, ooh, I see the Lord, and that one was like, I need to know the Lord better. Do they see that when they look at you? Or do they say, ooh? Whatever church she going to, I, don't, I ain't going. Because I don't know. She know the Lord. I mean, I don't know. what. To, nah, I ain't going. Mm -mm. You sitting out there doing whatever with them. You talking about going to church with? Well, I'm going to go to church. You out here with me doing the same thing. What do I need to go to church with you for? You just, mm, you swinging on the corner. You ringing on the corner. You doing whatever you feel like you big enough to do. And you want to come praise the Lord. Tell me, do you want to go to church? Mom? Nah, I'll catch you next time. And they say, I'm never sure why, because they're looking at you. What do they see? Okay. Leaders should faithfully declare God's truth and not promote their own opinions. Oh, my God. Leaders should faithfully, faithfully declare God's truth, meaning rightly dividing the word of truth. But you got to study to show yourself approved before you can write a divide. Uh-oh, did I say that? Yeah, I said it. So did Ain't taking it back. You got to study to show yourself approved to rightly divide uh -huh, the word of truth. I don't need to be promoting my own opinions. Sometimes I listen to messages and I be, some people I hear and I be like, wait, okay, what story they going to tell this time? Okay, how many stories they going to tell this time? How many rabbit trails? You know, it's like, I'm like, can you just preach? Can you just teach? We can talk about whatever else you're trying to say. We can talk about that later in the office outside. If we can sit down and talk about it. But don't be trying to preach and you talking about everything but the word said. You'll be sitting up there like, what that got to do with what? Just what? Okay, what? Wait a minute. How did? Okay, so anyway. But don't be trying to promote your own opinions. It's not about what you think. Because compared to God, you know nothing. You are nothing. I mean, you're something because of him, but I'm, you know what I'm saying. We, we're what? I mean, what? We can't even compare our minds with God. <sighs> okay. If we spend much time with God, I just told y'all about this, it will become evident to others. People know if you're with God or not. People know if you spend time with God or not. Because they're looking at you. They're listening to you. You know, we try to put on that, the look that we're so holy and so deep and we honor God and we talk about him and we lift him up and we magnify him. We praise his name. So we're just looking going on. We're like, what? I said, oh, they're so deep. Oh, my God. They have this one-on-one -on -one connection. And Lord looking like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Jesus be like, I don't know, Daddy, because I was trying to talk to them last week and they were listening. So I don't know what they're doing. But they just want to appear to be deep up here and then once they leave that they don't even spend no time with God that's the only time they spend with God when they at church that's all so it's all emotional <laughs> this is the worst song I'm supposed to cry on because everybody is crying so, ah, but we got too many emotional people I don't mean no harm maybe I do maybe, yeah it's too many emotional people. We get caught up in the emotion. Oh, Lord, you're so excellent. Oh, praise the Lord. I magnify you. Okay. Where's your evidence? That's right, Cheryl. Where, where, okay, if I follow you home, if I listen to your conversation, will I still be wanting to know the Lord? Or will I be trying to run the other way? What are you showing people? What do they see? What are you reflecting? Are you a vampire? Did I say that? Vampire. You know what a vampire? You know when a vampire, well, according to TV and legends, whatever. When a vampire looks in the mirror, what does that see? None. Cause why? They don't have a reflection. What am I saying? What they got to do with me? Some of y'all, some of people, some people don't even have a reflection. Because they see themselves in the mirror, they be like, hey, yes, I, mm -hmm. And God be like, what you looking at? I don't see nothing. What you? He be like, Lord, isn't it? What's it? 
So make sure that you're reflecting God's glory, reflecting God, representing God, reflection. When, when you see a reflection, the reflection is supposed to look like you. When you look at your reflection in the mirror, when you look at your reflection in water, mm, water, sometimes your reflection becomes distorted when it's in water, especially when the water is moving. So don't let your reflection be distorted. Hmm? Okay, so when your reflection, make sure it's like a mirror, it's dead on. So when people see you, like I tell you all the time, they should see God and not you. Mm. Reflect His glory. It's not hard if you want to reflect His glory. It's not hard. Just make up your mind and say, God, I need your glory. I need to reflect you. I need to represent you. Because what this ain't this ain't happening like I need to happen. So I need you. Quit going off, going, you know, what you feel like and what you think, what you no. Consult with God. Say, Lord, show me your glory. I've been going this way, not doing this from that. You know, I've been missing it. it. It ain't coming together like I need to. So Lord, show me your glory. I want to represent you. I want people when they see me. They see you. They look at me. They say, show me God. Show me the way to God. Teach me the way to God. Look like every time I see you, you don't have no problem. Baby, I got problems. Look like you don't go through nothing. Baby, I go through. But see, my thing is, I know God can bring me out. I know he can deliver me. I know what he did, right? what he doing right now, what he did back then. I did, Same God. Same God. He ain't going to change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I ain't got to worry about nothing because I know God's got me, my back, my front top. He's all over me and he's keeping me alive. All right. Hey, what did, okay. See, we did good time tonight because it was kind of a short list, you know, but I know, I know, you know, some, some, there was some stuff in there that we had to deal with. It was a short lesson, but reflect God's glory. Show God to people. Show God, the, show the world God. Show the world God in you. Okay, let me let me back to that. Let me back to that. Cause we love to show people. We love to go out into the world and show people. What about your family? Do they see God's glory? Cause some people, the world says, oh, they are so anointed. Oh my God. Yeah, it's just so blessed and just oh my god and go home the wife beat down the children looking crazy the dog stay in the house because he don't want to deal with so uh, so what do people what is you, what are you doing for your family you did start at home love starts at home and then it spreads abroad if your family don't see nothing in you why are you trying to get folks saved why are you trying to bring folks to, and you ain't can't bring your children? They don't know nothing. But you trying to do what you trying to do, trying to, okay. But if it doesn't start at home. Now you can't, you know, people just going to be people sometimes. Sometimes you can do all you can and it's still, but you got to be willing to put forth the work. Because all, everybody going to hear you. But you got to tell them something so they have something to reject. Because if you're trying to win your family and God tell you, okay, you need to start with your house. Well, Lord, you know them hard-headed children. Hey, Lanita, they ain't going to listen to me nowhere. God ain't tell you, only talk to them if they listen. He told you to tell them. You tell them it's all for you. It's all for you. It's on them once you tell them. Okay. Minute. So we're going to keep on reflecting God's glory. We're going to be bright. Bing. And they say shine like a diamond. No, baby. We're going to be, I don't even know, I don't even know nothing that bright. Oh, I know. We're going to shine like the sun. Hey, on a hot summer day. Bang. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I got to pull my sunglasses. I'm waiting on Never mind. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to reflect God's glory. Alright, hope you enjoyed the lesson on this evening. I've enjoyed y'all. God bless each and every one of y'all. 
Happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Okay? Do it in parts. Don't sit down one time and just... No, just, you know, take do it in parts, okay? All right, Happy Thanksgiving. Some of y'all I'm going to see Sunday, and the rest of y'all will be back here next Tuesday. All right? God bless you, and God keep you as my prayer. I love you, and ain't nothing you're going to do about it. Eh. Okay. If, if, no, I ain't going to say that for you. I just love you. All right? Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Until next time. Mm -hmm.